and uh, welcome again. Uh, so this morning we are going to continue and finish the, the chapter on the design guidelines. Uh, so we continue where we left uh, yesterday. Um, basically yesterday we, we discussed about uh, whether this design was better or worse uh, uh, than other kind of designs uh, uh, concerning you know, the usage of, uh, of um, short-term memory uh, by the users. So uh, do you um, want to have all the information in one place or you want to collect the information by small pieces? And if you do the second, like Google is doing, uh, you just uh, have to remember to uh, show to the user all previous information and uh, uh, don't rely on the user trying to remember uh, what they did uh, in the previous uh, uh, steps. Huh? So for example, one uh, one uh, one general rule it could be uh, avoid entering a new data okay so uh, like the example that we always do is if you have uh, i don't know to uh, enter your uh, country hmm, where you live uh, instead of having the user to type that uh, you give a list uh, for uh, for selecting those uh, so that the user can only pick uh, some data which is uh, correct by construction because you provided them and it doesn't need to write and have maybe some also some doubts whether to write their country in their own language or in the English language or in the language of the website and so on so in general uh, trying to, to help the user select rather than entering um, except in some cases so I took here yesterday this uh, screenshot uh, from uh, uh, from my uh, a student, okay, who was uh, uh, entering some information on the on the Polytechnic website about uh, the English English certificate, and uh, uh, this was the list. So maybe they they tried uh, to apply this rule in in the in designing this web page, where uh, they uh, put a list of all the possible uh, say gradings you could get. Uh, into the English exam, no? depending on the certificate or depending on, on the score that you got uh, with your certificate. And so you have to select the score and you have you know, a long list uh, of options with all the possible numbers uh, between the minimum accepted value to the maximum value you could get. And of course they would map to, uh, to, the, to the levels of the certification, so B, C, A, and so on. Uh, I I don't think it's a, it's a good idea hmm, to uh, to present this information in this very long list um, for at least two reasons. Uh, one, actually, the user could enter the score directly, so it could have a, just a text box when the user can enter maybe 178, which is my score. Uh, so it's not a complex information. It's a it's a piece of data. Uh, that you can enter and you can, of course, uh, validate this value. Okay, check that the user doesn't enter an invalid value and uh, or prevent him for, for entering invalid value rather than having a, a long list uh, of, uh, um, of, uh, of values. An example is when uh, maybe you're registering on a website. Uh, when you're registering on a website, uh, they ask you the date of birth. When are, when are you born? And usually, in no, not usually, in some cases, the, you, they pop up a list with 100 different years, okay? Because of course, people may be just uh, 15 years old or 80 years old, so they need all the possible values. While it's not a problem for anybody to type in their own uh, birth year, because we know that so well that we went, we will not get it wrong. And it will be much more difficult to scroll and to find the real, the, the current value uh, across a long list. So in some cases, uh, uh, when the list is too long, uh, it's also uh, you know, difficult to, 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 fa to find the right value. Hmm? Uh, Enrico is also telling me that uh, uh, there is no consistency, of course, because they are trying to mix, uh, no? they are trying to mix uh, uh different uh, um criteria into the same um so actually they they had a different rule before 2015 and uh, uh 
after probably 2015. So prob this from is also a mistake. Uh, so it should have been probably after uh, or since, uh, but not from. Uh, from is a, is a wrong translation, which is very funny because they are asking you to enter enter your English certification, and it's not in. Uh, they are not using the correct English prepositions, and uh, but uh, again. Uh, before 2015, does it mean that any any score is valid? So if if I'm before 2015, even if so, for example, imagine I have a 175, and I took it before 2015. What should I select? Should I select this one, or the 175, or maybe maybe it's a C 171? Uh, it's not clear. It's not clear because really we are asking different kinds of information and we're mixing all of it together. Uh, also, we are relying on the user to understand uh, uh, what is the, um, the boundary between the different conditions. For example, if I got the certification in 2015, should I select before or after? Hmm? So are these uh, uh, before and after uh, greater than 2015 or greater than equal? And the same for uh, less or less than equal 2015 in this case. It's not clear here. Hmm? So uh, how to make a lot of mistakes uh, in a very, uh, in a, just in one uh, drop down menu? That probably was done for easing the work of students, okay? So how would uh, I re redesign probably this one? OK, uh, there I, I probably would uh, select uh, something very much easier, asking the user, OK, when is the year uh, where you got your, your certification? And this year could be maybe just a text area where you enter the year, or it could be uh, a drop down menu, so a, a list of options uh, where the option could be, uh, for example, uh, uh, I don't know, 2000 to 2014, 2015, uh, 2020, for example. So that, that uh, we have. Uh, if there are only two different options, we could have a drop down menu with two options, or we could have just two radio buttons uh, um, uh, until uh, 2014 or since uh, 2015. So that you can just enter the year here. I, I took it in 2013. OK, I entered the number. or. I let you, if there are only two possible choices because the rule changed in, the, in, the, in that year, you could uh, uh, offer the two different choices. You must be careful about not uh, overlapping the possibilities. So you see, I'm closing here at 2014 and I'm starting at 2015. So there is no ambiguity of what I should do if I am exactly in 2015. And so one of these three options would be okay, which would be easier. And then the other is just the score. Okay. You just enter the score. If you want, you can add some, you know, the button for modifying up and down the number. Sorry, this always pops up. So the spinner, so that you can adjust the number, uh, or basically you can just type it in there 182. And that's enough. OK, uh, and I, I think it's much easier than just finding and trying to interpret that. Uh, by the way, another uh, inconsistency here is the order. You see that here the order of the score is ascending from smaller to larger. And but this one uh, again is ascending, but then we have a descending step here. So OK. Uh, 179, you could imagine something more, instead it's slower, 160. 
Yes, because it's 160 of level C, which is not comparable with the 179 of level B. There are two different scales. So probably uh, we could also have, uh, um, probably we should also have a level that could be a C or a B hmm, to select, uh, to choose for the user. Hmm. If the score is depending on the level, uh, then you have a different, but if you are just in your, with your gaze, and you are just watching at the right, right column, you cannot make this number. So, uh, okay, they increase and then they decrease, they start again from 160. Why is that? Oh yes, because the certificate type has changed. Hmm. So, it's uh, we are the the different let's say pieces of information that they were put together, and of course there is no logical way of putting all of them together because they are not or uh, they cannot be ordered okay uh, meaningfully. So this is just one example that you find, and uh, and uh, as I mentioned, once you start noticing these things, uh, uh, they really pop up to your attention. So you say uh, every time you have to think a, a bit. Uh, 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 about what you are doing, it means that something is wrong. One last point uh, that I, that I, I noticed just now, the white of the, the text box below is too small. And it means that uh, it's truncating the value. So once you close that uh, um, drop down menu, you will not see, you will not be able to see what is selected. Because in some cases it gets truncated, and since the most important information is on the rightmost uh, characters, uh, you enter some data, but you cannot visually, you cannot just read what you entered. To uh, read what you entered, you need to open it again and to check what you what you selected. Because the selected uh, string is longer than the number of characters that are allowed here. Okay. Um, and uh, yes, I agree with the, the comment of Andrea. We say that if I am entering some data into multiple fields, of course, uh, I could do, I should do cross checks, uh, okay, to avoid the invalid data being entered. Um, so maybe if uh, you see that before 2015, uh, I don't care about the score, for example. And so if the user selects uh, this, uh, the, the first va value before 2015, I could just uh, uh, disable the score uh, text box uh, saying, okay, I don't need that, that information because you selected a, a different uh, year range and the rules were different. I only need the, the level. I don't need the, the detailed score, for example. Mm -hmm. So in this case, yes, if the forms are cross-linked, they could validate the data and avoid uh, inconsistent uh, data to, for being entered and so on. Mm -hmm. Yes, thanks for the suggestion. So even just a small, uh, a small input can be re redesigned in a much uh, cleaner way. Mm -hmm. And uh, the bad part is that we are getting used to bad interfaces and, and we take them from gra for granted, okay. Um, Okay, so this were the, I said, uh, a quick walkthrough to the eight uh, uh, basic principles. Uh, there are other authors uh, uh, that also pre presented or suggested lists of, uh, of guidelines and principles. For example, uh, Benyon, uh, in a famous book, uh, uh, tried to pick some information from Norman and, and Nielsen and put them together into a list of his own. So a lot of this material is, is very similar across different authors. Um, but uh, so you see that in, in this list, I put some uh, uh, reference saying, okay, this we already discussed about, above in, other, um, in the other list of design principles. Here, I only will highlight uh, those concepts that Benyon is bringing up and that they were not in the previous list of eight uh, design principles of the, of the gold, <laughs> let's say, uh, design principle. Um, so they are grouped into broad categories, for example, learnability. No? So helping people to understand how the interface is working, how the system is working. Learning and remembering, okay? So one is the first learning and the other is uh, um, when they come from the second and third time, I remember uh, how it worked. I don't need to relearn it every time. 
uh, okay the visibility is also is one of the uh, you know the key points from norman uh, the, of the interpretation of the internal state um, and so we already uh, discussed this concept uh, many times uh, where the system should be able to provide the user a clear representation of what the system currently knows and what is the state in which the system is currently in uh, familiarity is also uh, maybe it's new um, use the language and the season balls that the intended audience will be familiar with okay so we should speak the language of the users basically so if our users are children we should use some symbols and some words that are suitable for them that they could understand easily if our uh, users I are I don't know um, uh, aerospace or mechanical engineers uh, they will have a lot of uh, uh, background knowledge and a lot of uh, uh, meanings for some you know technical terms for them and the interface should adapt to to that uh, to that knowledge also the icons uh, the colors the words uh, so uh, first of all again we are uh, um, using the principle know your users so if you if i know how my users think how my users speak what are their concepts what what is the way in which they are expressing some concepts uh, i will use that language mm -hmm. um, and this is particularly important when you are you know, uh, doing some public service uh, or something like that uh, uh, so, for example, the website of a university should speak the language of the students uh, and not speak the language of the bureaucracy that sometimes uh, uh, is, uh, is the main language in, in which information is provided and so it's also difficult to, to decode. Hmm. Um, and another important principle which applies to physical objects uh, as well as uh, in interfaces is the concept of uh, affordance. Um, this is a very powerful concept. It means that uh, the shape or the size of, a, of an item, maybe a physical object or an interface element, determines the way in which you can use that. Hmm? Uh, so, uh, I don't know, if I have a pen with a cap, the cap can only be pulled and inserted in this way you cannot do any any other strange uh, operations with that because the size of it doesn't allow you to do anything else um, imagine when you're walking to a door and you need to understand whether to push or pull that door okay uh, and sometimes you really don't know and you need you, re you need to read the sign in some other times it's very easy because maybe for pulling they put a handle that you can grip and pull. And for pushing, they put a plaque, okay, on the door. And so you have just to push with your hand. So the physical shape of, of a plaque on the, on, the, on the glass, for example, uh, tells you that you should put your hand there. And the only operation you can do with a plaque is just pushing that. You, you have no other options. You don't have, you don't have to think. And is a, is a, a handle, if the handle is bolted to the door, doesn't move so you see that it's bolted that it's fixed and so the only thing that you could do with that with a handle is is pull that uh, or maybe push it aside if the if the, if the door is um, is um, uh, um, a rolling door okay uh, so in many cases there are some you know uh, shapes of physical objects that constrain the type of interaction physical interaction we can do and so make it very explicit uh, of what actions we could do hmm? uh, with that object uh, i don't know the you no know, the handles of a cup uh, are designed to be you know, picked by your fingers uh, and the, the only thing you, you could do you cannot uh, you know use the handle in any different uh, way uh, in a natural way of course um, you see some uh, emergency doors. You know the em emergency doors in, in a lot of places. Uh, we, uh, they are they have the, the the big red bar in the middle. Okay, uh, the panic doors. I, I mean, I, um, I, I think uh, I know what I'm what I'm meaning. Uh, and you just have even if you are running, even if you are in panic, if there's the crowd pushing you, there is this big red bar that is 
very visible and the only thing you can do is push it and even if you don't push it with your hands it happens that you may push it with your body for example with your back or whatever the door will open anyway because that's designed to be easy to open without uh, you know the, the the building is on fire you don't need to st stop and think whether should i pull or push or or uh, rotate the, the handle or whatever so in that case the, the physical shape of the object was just designed for allowing a single type of operation and uh, for example you have this picture that tries to tries okay to apply this concept uh, to um, a waste container. This was somewhere in, in Spain, probably. Yes, in Catalonia. Uh, and the picture is not very clear, but I have a, a larger version here. Uh, so who designed this uh, container, waste container, um, suggested that or help you, try to help you to differentiate your waste. So for example, they were saying that uh, if you are um, you, if you have some CDs or DVDs, you, you should put them in either of these two compartments, the top or the bottom are the same. And you see there's only a small uh, space for inserting the CD. So only a CD would be able to fit into that. And if you have some uh, uh, batteries, uh, you can have different shapes and so you can insert them in these uh, holes. If you have lamps, uh, you could put them there and so on. Uh, this strange picture should be uh, the representation of a printer cartridge. And so there's the hole for the cartridges. Uh, so it, it went very well with the CDs. Hmm? In the other cases, you see that these holes are quite similar to each other. So the, the shape of the object uh, is not um, so well represented by the shape of the hole, but it was an attempt, uh, basically. And of course, this doesn't pre didn't prevent, uh, okay, users uh, for uh, for uh, throwing a neon light uh, into the printer cartridge slot because um, you know the message was there but it was not uh, strong enough, uh, and uh, instead of uh, putting them here, probably in the uh, in the neon or low low say low energy lamp, they put it. I didn't, they didn't know what, where to put it and they put some in, in, a, in a random place, okay? But the idea is uh, uh, to constrain you know, the action of the user so that he can only do the right thing. And uh, we can translate it quite easily hmm? uh, also in the world of the user interfaces. Uh, you know, the, 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 the very simple example is a button, no? uh, an okay or cancel button. Uh, what can you do with that button? You can only do one action. You can only push it. So its shape and the behavior we know uh, only allows for one one type of interaction. And but if we have uh, you know a white rectangle with a blinking cursor that which is blinking, that's a prompt for entering some information. We cannot click there. So if you click inside a text area. Okay, imagine you click here, nothing happens. The only thing that happens is that the cursor will be focused, we are, we are, we are focusing the text area. So you cannot activate a text area by, by, by clicking into it. You have, to, you have to type in a way, okay? And, uh, and the same, you know, for a drop-down menu, if you have the menu closed, uh, if you click on it, uh, it will open the options. You cannot do, every time you click, it will open the option and then you, you may click there for closing it and for selecting and so on. So the type of, of actions you can do is limited. So with those elements, you can only do those actions. So in a way, uh, you will never think of, uh, you know, dragging and dropping a button. Or you would never mm, think of typing into a drop down menu if the because you see that there's a slight difference because when you have a drop down menu usually the first line is, is gray when you have a, a text area usually the background here is white and if you have a combo box where you can either type or select 
Well, usually we have a, a white background here and a gray background in the options. And the fact that this is a, is a different color is telling us that we may also type there. Like when you are you know, selecting a font from a, a, a set of fonts or something like that. So there are um, shapes uh, and colors and, uh, and uh, the way some user interface elements are reacting that are telling us uh, um, what we can do with them. And there are very strong signals. Uh, and then concerning the, the control by the users against uh, strong principles, uh, uh, letting the user be effective in uh, their interaction with the, with the system, um, giving the user a sense of being in control, uh, one dimension could be the navigation. So uh, giving the user some information about how to move in the different parts of the application or in the different parts of the website. Um, in a way, all the signs, the small signs that will tell you, okay, you are at the top now, or you are in this section, you are in that section, uh, you can move forward or backward through a sequence of steps and so on. So there are all uh, small hints that we should remember to give our users in our interface. You see, they are not telling here, you must put an icon, you must put a breadcrumbs, you must uh, highlight the, the, the menu item corresponding to the sections in which you are. These are, of course, the possible solutions for this problem. Here, we are still at the level of principles. So they are telling you the things that you should remember. And you should design in some way. You should take into account uh, about all of these uh, principles in your design how to apply them in practical uh, cases, it will be the, 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 the role of the next step or the, the guidelines step. Hmm? Um, uh, control. Who is in control of the next interaction? So I am waiting for the computer to do something or is the computer waiting for me to do something? Will this page uh, refresh automatically or do I need to refresh it explicitly? Are the data already understood by the, the submitted and understood by the system, or are the data still in, say, editing mode and they still need a confirmation? Hmm. Um, I had a very strange experience. Currently, we are teaching the, the course of computer science on the first year of the bachelor degree. And we are using a nice tool for letting uh, students write uh, Python code, which is the PyCharm Educational Edition. Okay, so you, most of you maybe uh, already know the PyCharm uh, editor, and uh, the Educational Edition is simplified. It has a much less uh, say, details and functionality, which is, is simpler to use. They removed the save button. Okay. And uh, in the normal edition, of course, you have save and save as, uh, as normally, and they just, they, there's no save button there. Why? Well, because it, all the files are automatically saved. And it created a bit of uh, you know, this concept at the, at the beginning, say, okay, I, I, I'm, am I, how am I sure that uh, the file is saved or not? Uh, it saves automatically, but it's in a desktop program and in desktop programs, usually you don't have the automatic saving. You must save explicitly. So uh, it was breaking for the user convenience. It was breaking a convention. And at first, uh, we had to learn that. You have to be sure. I remember with my students, let's do a couple of tests. Let's try it. Okay. And then we were convinced that uh, you, didn't, you don't need to save because every modification is automatically saved, which is, of course, bad if you are trying, if you deleted something by mistake. Uh, and uh, so you cannot, uh, uh, the, the mistake is automatically uh, saved, uh, of course, onto the file. So uh, always, uh, uh, sometimes you are trying to, to make the life easier for the users, uh, but, uh, and it's good, uh, always try not to make it more confusing. So not to make uh, some behavior that the user don't expect in a way. Uh, this is an example probably we'll, we'll also consider it later. Uh, again, from a user interface that uh, you went through because it's the interface for uh, enrolling at the university, you know, at Polytechnic here. And this is probably, uh, 
yeah it's one of one of the steps okay but i i don't i don't care about the the details uh the problem is that we have clearly a choice to make between this and that action and then we have two confirmation buttons let's say a confirmation button here and a confirmation button there okay confirm and forward and this is confusing because uh, okay the interface is asking me to fill or to choose between these two options that's fine and uh, what is the difference between clicking here on the confirmation button or on the forward button since they are different buttons they will do different things and it looks like this one is uh, closely related you see this line down is is closer to to the form so probably probably this button is linked uh, these three items are linked together so to enter the choice here i probably need to click on confirm probably i don't know just because of this line this black line here and the, the position of this button which is closer to the question and so my confusion comes from what happens if i click forward instead of confirmation will i lose forever the confirmation will it confirm any in any case uh, the currently selected options or not i know i don't know the real answer is i don't know or the real answer is this interface doesn't make it clear um, maybe we can do this confirmation of this selection later on so we can go forward and bang and come back later we don't know actually from the way this interface is done we have no impression of control okay we don't know whether this forward button is a, a definite choice or a definite submission for the choice we're making here and also we don't know if we are clicking on this confirmation button whether we will go forward also or not so uh, yeah it's uh, at all levels here uh, we are trying what what are we trying to do when we see this page we are trying mentally in our in our mind to decide what is the rule for this page what what is happening making a model uh, what will come after what will happen if i click on each of these uh, um, uh, information items uh, remember the concept here is control okay i know that if i press the brake on my car it will slow down that's for sure so i'm feeling control of my car because if i brake usually the car will stop here i don't know i don't feel in control because i'm not sure what will happen okay so even if uh, um, david is suggesting that, we, that the error here is at the semantic level yes but not only because for example the semantics of confirm is clear the semantic of this button is clear i'm confirming this choice the problem is what happens next so what is the the I'm confirming and then what happens uh, if I don't know what will happen if I click on a button imagine you you go into a car and you, you don't find three pedals okay but only oh but, but four so uh, you will not probably risk uh, pressing one of them because you don't you're not sure how they will map you learn to drive cars with three pedals and this one has four so uh, I, I I'm careful I, I I'm not feeling too con in control maybe i understand that this is the uh, the throttle okay uh, but uh, i'm not sure to to start until i understand what they do hmm? so uh, as always the the the, the problems are, are mixed now we have uh, uh, this forward is more of a sem semantic problem forward of what where to okay what is the next step what happens can i go forward without confirming this is the real problem and we don't have any any hint about that here and uh, we we see a lot of this uh, in our daily life okay uh, usually we don't see this 
big mistakes uh, in uh, the big websites okay the, the website would have millions of users uh, probably already found sorted out and corrected all these kind of stupid mistakes but a uh, website with a lower audience and lower may also mean maybe 30 000 people like the students uh, is something that usually uh, in many cases it may happen that they have uh, very bad uh, design choices okay uh, for these other um, principles uh, we don't have much uh, more to say because uh, we they deal the safety and security they all deal with the, with the errors uh, we already uh, discussed that and we'll of course uh, um, later on have some criteria for evaluating those okay uh, right now right now just remember we are in the creation phase in the exploration phase and the design phase later on we will learn how to use this principle for evaluation for giving a scores okay you are you are perfect you're good you're bad uh, according to different criteria we will do that in two weeks from now okay um, and uh, the accommodation uh, principle is uh, uh, trying to make the user feel uh, confident and feel at home with the user interface. Uh, uh, well, from a flexibility point of view, we already discussed about the, the, the size, for example, of the fonts or the interface or whatever, but also the, the, the style of the interface. Okay, something nice to see also, it's nice to use uh, and um, say friendly in many cases. Okay without being pedantic but uh, you don't need to be you know, too formal or too strict uh, or too and this is a matter of style how you work uh, uh, how you write the sentences uh, what choice of colors and uh, of icons you choose uh, um, just to let's say um, help people go forward with the con conversation on your system on your interface um, Normans also uh, tried to turn uh, the principles uh, into, let's say, rules uh, for transforming. Is nice uh, uh, how they put it: transforming difficult tasks uh, into simple ones. Okay, so this is a, a good mantra. Saying, okay, let's how can how can we make it simpler? So can can we make it simpler and how? And uh, uh, one idea is. Uh, uh, we should know what people know. We know our users, we know their knowledge. So the knowledge in the head of the users. So it's something that is already known to the user. I can exploit this information or something that is already in the context, in the word, I would say, okay? In the context for all the users. So if the user have something, the user live in a house or have something uh, around them uh, this information is uh, available we are sure that this information is available to our users so we can use that uh, for uh, for helping the user to interpret uh, our um, our interface for example when we're asking about the start and end time for something the concept of time we can assume that all the users know that we don't have to explain it. The um, the current time, what hour it is, is information that user probably has or can very easily know how to how to detect. So we don't need to do special effort for those kinds of concepts, for example. If the if possible. We, and we, we remember that we try to do task analysis to break down a task into separate, separate actions. Uh, can we put those tasks together in a different order? Or maybe can we skip some of the tasks because they are not really needed? And so can we make this task structure simpler, means shorter or more linear? Okay, it's, it's easier to describe or to let a user understand a linear sequence of tasks uh, rather than some maybe very complex iteration or branching uh, uh, structure. Okay, so again, if, 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 if possible, we should try to make our tasks uh, linear and, and short. Okay, visibility, okay, we already it popped out uh, already many times. Uh, um, the mappings. Uh, uh, here are between 
the visual elements or the interface elements and the concepts that the user has in mind. Uh, mm, the mappings are basically uh, right if you are consistent. Uh, and uh, so we are using the same met metaphors, the same colors, uh, and so on. And uh, uh, um, uh, sorry, what I was saying to say. Um, Yes, and they're explicit, okay. Uh, so you are uh, showing that uh, that concept is highlighted, that button is repeated in the same way and so on. And so uh, the, with respect to the user knowledge. Uh, for example, Again, you are linking with the knowledge of, of the people. Um, if we are using some symbol or some icon that may or may not be known to the users, uh, then we need to explain it in a in a different way. For example, okay. Um, uh, I don't know if you are building something for you know engineers. Uh, you know that all engineers have some you know mathematical background or something like that so you can use some some symbols uh, maybe that are not clear may not be clear to uh, to to other users okay uh, that we don't use, for example just a very stupid example i don't see it used anywhere but we all know that this is the empty set means uh, empty so if we are we saw that symbol in a user interface uh, that wouldn't surprise any of us okay we are accustomed to that, but we, I will not use it. I would not use it uh, on a general purpose website uh, because I don't. I'm not sure that, that people recognize that symbol in uh, in that way. Uh, for example, um, and uh, uh, okay, the exploiting the power of constraints. The next uh, point uh, is uh, let's say, for example with uh, with affordance uh, okay so a given element can only work in some way and so you should e exploit that if you have a uh, if you need to enter a short number make uh, the text box smaller so that it will filled uh, will be filled with only three or four digits if you make it larger then you are encouraging the user to enter something longer that will be wrong will be wrong okay? so maybe if the space is tight, the user knows they will not enter uh, too much information, for example. Um, and OK, designing for errors, so always be thinking about what possibly wrong could the user do. And so how could they prevent it or how could they correct it? It's something that we already discussed. And I want to come to this other final option. If I need to present an interface, uh, or an, an element uh, to the user. And it's uh, something that is not uh, in the normal life of the user. It's not, uh, um, I can also uh, you know, use uh, the information that the user has in their head. It's not something explicit uh, because maybe it's some abstract concept. So you cannot use a visual uh, indication which is too concrete, too specific. How could I, what could I do? Hmm? Uh, in those cases, uh, we could uh, just use uh, standard uh, representations. Uh, I'm making one example uh, here. Oh, sorry. This one. Why? Why is doing so? Sometimes. Imagine the. You see this button somewhere. What? Is, what is it? What does this button do if you find it on a website or on a on a web on a mobile application? Uh, we uh, recognize that that will some way open a menu. Open a menu, let's say, and the so-called hamburger menu. Yes, Diego, because it has three layers. Um, but it's totally abstract. It's not uh, natural. No? It's not uh, self-evident. 
there's nothing in the real world that will tell us uh, that the menu should be done like that. If you go to the to the restaurant and open the menu, the menu isn't made like that. It doesn't have three bars, okay, in that. Uh, the what I'm saying is that we know that this uh, icon is opening a menu or a list of options because we used it many times and because all the applications, mobile applications, and many websites are starting to use that. So everybody uses that. And at the end, we are learning that uh, this is the function uh, of, that, uh, of that menu. It didn't uh, exist until four or five years ago, or maybe six, I mean, the time uh, flies. Um, and so there were no uh, menu button. Uh, the websites uh, just normally had a menu at the top or on the, in the left uh, column. Just the, the, the menu items were visible. When we started with mobile applications, uh, there was no space available for the menu. So they, they, they tried to find a way to collapse the menu, make it invisible in, a, in the mobile interface. Uh, and make it easy to open it again. And they try different conventions and until they came out with this one. So uh, ideally, these three lines uh, are the visual abstract representation of the fact that a menu has many items, one, two, three, four, five, and six, uh, that you can select, okay? And so these three items would represent uh, in the idea of the designer of this icon, the one, the different, uh, uh, items menu items or option items that will appear when you really open the menu but really there's no uh, there's no uh, say visibility or understandability of this icon if we don't know it uh, before if we didn't know it before uh, so in 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 a way it's a standard with the strength of uh, uh, many web applications, many mobile applications, uh, many websites and so on, that they are all using it, uh, then we recognize it. Even if there is no easy rec recognizability or uh, anything else, okay? So it could have been any other shape. We recognize it because it's everywhere. Okay, it works. We we like we may like it or not, uh, but nobody asked us. They just started using it. Uh, why should uh, did I brought? Uh, why did I bring up this uh, this uh, example? Because if you, if you want to impose a standard, you must be strong. We cannot uh, make a new application and say, okay, but uh, now let's now change the standard, use different conventions, use different icons. Uh, let's put the name of the application at the bottom instead of at the top, for example. Um, you, 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 uh, our users will not recognize that. Will not recognize uh, uh, that convention because it's different. Uh, we, it will only be in our website, in our application. And we are not strong enough uh, to make uh, all the users learn a new convention. I'm learning a new convention, the hamburger menu, because I see it everywhere. Not just on my website, in all of them. And so it's a, we are learning it and they are, they are re reinforcing my learning. If I'm doing something different on my website, the user, I'm not strong enough, I'm not big enough for making the users learn uh, um, how to use that uh, that element okay i cannot impose a standard the standard is is an emergent property it is standard because everybody uses that i cannot decide tomorrow morning unless maybe i'm google or apple uh, i cannot decide tomorrow morning that uh, this new icon as this uh, i decide uh, that uh, i don't know i want uh, i decide that this icon means uh, confirmation okay i can decide it but my users will not find out and nobody else will use it so i cannot just force a standard 
And so uh, this is also a message, don't try to invent new representations, try to follow what all the others are doing, because that's the only way you can be sure that the users uh, can recognize it. Hmm? Um, okay, uh, there are uh, many other uh, you know, sources of information. Uh, for example, there, uh, I selected, um, uh, so, sorry, uh, talking about the, the I had to bring it up again, the, the Polytechnic website, of course, but uh, um, there's a, there are interesting usages. Uh, you see that the, this uh, website, uh, what is that? Maybe I don't remember. Let's pick another one. No. No, not here. Sorry, another one. Uh, this one, I'm sure. Okay. You see that in some cases of this website, uh, they started to also use this, uh, uh, this icon here. Uh, in many cases, we are, it's not very easy to see, it's not very visible, uh, because it's working in a different way from what we expect. So uh, usually the menu should be at the left, should not pop up in the middle. We are not used to menus that pop up in the middle. The menu is at the top or at the left side. In this case, we are clicking menu, it's, it's popping up in the center. And uh, uh, this menu is actually not a menu, but it's a combination of four different menus. This one, this horizontal bar here, this list here with different uh, ballots, that don't, don't get me started. This is another level. And then this, uh, uh, the finally, we have this one on, on the right. So mm, it's just uh, confusing. Some of these items are related, uh, for example, course description, we are here. Some items are related to the description of the program of this course. So it looks like the first uh, row is a navigation internal to this course. The second are general link links. And this link to the Polytechnic is totally useless because it's already there. It's already in the logo. And everybody knows that if you click, if you click the logo, you go to the website. And this uh, course catalog uh, or a matter of science are sort of uh, breadcrumbs, okay? Saying where you are inside the hierarchy of pages. Uh, but breadcrumbs should be listed uh, at the top uh, and should not appear as items in a menu. And these home syllables and news are probably, I don't know. I don't know. News could be this one. Uh, what is different between syllables and course programs? Uh, I don't know. OK, I could click and they will find. But the whole point here is having uh, some visibility and some control, offering some visibility, some control to the user. So the fact that they, use, they are using the hamburger menu, but the behavior of this menu is totally different from what we find in uh, in all other other applications is just making that uh, uh, confusing or uh, in the in, in Diego's words uh, uh, even worse ugly uh, by the way if we open the same page with your mobile it will come out differently so the the way in which this menu expands is different in the mobile side and uh, of course it's not good so not you should not just, uh, I don't I don't want to shame these people that build this page, uh, uh, I'm far from that. But the idea is if you, are, if you are using one convention, one standard, use it until the end. Hmm? And uh, so uh, the idea is uh, uh, we should learn many, how other people are, are working. What are the best uh, practices? What are the normal ways of doing that, okay? I found this website, which is a bit old, and because it's uh, six years old, uh, but it uh, it's practical because uh, it gives you uh, the, the principles, but also some uh, some examples, hmm? some practical examples. For example, I don't know uh, about uh, defaults. Uh, it will tell you 
uh, how to deal with default values or default fields and uh, about uh, you know uh, the consistency concept uh, it will go into examples uh, where do I find examples and uh, and uh, and so on uh, so uh, how to uh, you find in real life uh, uh, some example it's not it's not uh, very nice to see this, this page because there's a lot uh, of, of text uh, basically but there are uh, many as I said uh, tales and examples uh, unfortunately it doesn't include the screenshots uh, or, or uh, of real uh, example they have just uh, some boxes that um, explains that so you find a lot of resources like this so people try to uh, convert the principles uh, uh, to some practical advice basically mm -hmm. um, and okay that's one 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 possible concept that tries to give you some hints and suggestions on different aspects uh, of the general principles but of course we need something more we need something more in the sense that uh, okay we 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 understand the principles we can maybe recognize if some principle is not used correctly but the final question is okay but should what should i do what is the the good, good solution the right solution to my problem and uh, for this we need to move down a step uh, towards more concrete information which is in the, in the form of uh, design guidelines okay the guidelines basically are practical rules in many cases practical rules that tell me uh, how to implement the different principles so i know about visibility i know about error prevention okay i need to enter a date how can you do error prevention when entering a date uh, the principles don't tell you that hmm? uh, how do i do that in android how do i do that in a web application how do i do that in a, in a windows application the principles don't tell you that Okay, they are general enough to be applicable to a wide range of possibilities, but they need to be specialized in a, in a specific set of rules. We like rules, okay? We like rules because in that condition, that situation, we apply this rule and we get a result, which is the, uh, you know, the, the best practice uh, that are being experimented for that specific case. So the idea of best practice here is that thousands of designers before us try to face the same the identical same problems uh, as we are facing today we are not so special to do something extra okay unless you are designing the cockpit for going to mars for example uh, what you are doing is probably already been done uh, hundreds or, or thousands of times but by, by other designers and uh, the design community, uh, you know, is exchanging information. Every, everybody is copying from good ideas from everybody else until we get a, a set of best best practices, which are time dependent. They, they are evolving. So the best practice today is not that the same that we had 10 years ago, for example. It's normal. But at least we should recognize them and try to uh, observe what works best Remember, practice is, is after the fact. I'm doing some design and I see, oh, it's working well. So it's becoming, it's good and it's the best way people solve some solution. So we can translate practices into rules. A practice is something that works well. A rule is some suggestion for uh, implementing a solution in a way that we hope it will work well uh, with the real users so the rules are in a way the the uh, simplification the synthesis of uh, all the good and bad uh, um, things that uh, constitute the the, 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 the the overall experience of, uh, of many interaction designers okay so in a way uh, we are exploiting the designers I know at Google that spent uh, millions of dollars and uh, hundreds of hours to design something that turned out to work well. And then we have the rule book that will tell us uh, if you want to open a menu, do it in this way. If you want to have a confirmation button, do it in this way, and so on. 
uh, they are not really standards because there's no standardization or there is no rules there are nothing to be enforced but it's just a common knowledge and they can also this common knowledge usually is also encapsulated into into frameworks and libraries so if you follow some rules you most likely already have a library ready for implementing those widgets on those uh, layouts for you, for example. Hmm? Um, I would have liked to show you this, uh, this website that was really nice, uh, guidelines.usability.gov, but uh, it, it's not working today. Or in, uh, I, I checked all the links uh, in this week before the, the class. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, this, uh, this address here is not working anymore. There's this usability.go website that had a guideline section, but uh, unfortunately, the guidelines uh, is not uh, uh, available anymore. And, uh, and so I, I wrote, uh, when I discovered that a couple of days ago, I wrote to the authors of the website if it was still online, but uh, I still haven't got any, any response. That was very interesting because uh, um, it had a, we can read here, for example, the, uh, the page layout, the navigation, links, uh, headings, uh, lists, uh, and every of these, each of these chapters, chapters uh, had uh, some real, a lot of examples. This was in general uh, designed for um, for websites, uh, for for online uh, content, and there are a lot of examples that we could uh, uh, copy. But if I find it or somewhere else, I will. Uh, try to share it again. Um, there's other sort of guidelines. Uh, for example, this uh, web style guide. Uh, again, uh, the problem with this uh, in, uh, this uh, some content is that uh, uh, in many cases they become old. Uh, uh, but for example, typography talks about uh, uh, the text. Uh, and so it'll tell you uh, how how to implement uh, in uh, in HTML uh, some uh, typographic options that you want. Uh, again, it's a lot of explanations, but uh, there's not yet uh, a lot of practical content until we move to the real guidelines. So uh, let's aside the theory, let's dive uh, into some specific tool. So for example, if you're developing something for, for the Apple devices, uh, they will not uh, tell you a lot about basic principles. They will give you practical rules. So, for example, if you go to this website, developer.apple.com slash design, uh, they publish some human interface guidelines. So are you going to develop an application for the Mac, for iOS, for the watch? They are talking about devices. They are not talking about uh, websites. Um, Ah, yes, yeah, you found it in the web archive. Yes, thank you for, thanks for the link. Um, in macOS, for example, let's uh, imagine you are trying to design a macOS uh, desktop application. And uh, it's telling you how to deal with different uh, aspects. For example, menus. Uh, we are discussing the menus, and it's telling you everything about the menus, how a menu is done, the type of menus. So it's very specific. Uh, we have the menu bar, which is the one on the top. We are contextual menus that pop up. We have the dock menus, uh, like uh, uh, you say that, uh, like show in Finder, so something that is docked uh, to, to the windows. Uh, and they will tell you how to use, uh, you see the, the, the detail, okay? Provide intuitive menu titles, of course, is in general. Keep menus enabled even when the menu items are unavailable. So if an item is not available right now, uh, keep it uh, keep it um, visible. Huh? Even if you cannot click it, but you should uh, see it. Use text and not icons for menu titles. Huh? These are practical, very practical information. A menu should be made of text, not of icons, for example. And then about the, the items, uh, trying to use the verbs uh, for menu items that initiate actions and adjectives for menu items that toggle attribute states, hmm? visible, not visible, uh, bold, italic, or copy is an action. 
So if you read that, they are giving you very uh, you know, practical suggestion, even without going to the, to the code that you are going to write. But then the code will be you know, easy because you just have to learn the, 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 uh, the, um, the toolkit. And the same here, contextual menus and goes into detail, doc menus, for example, the contextual ones are, again, explain uh, item by item what you should do. Buttons. You see, there's a lot of <laughs> pages about buttons. Okay, uh, buttons could be uh, each of these. Uh, you know, push buttons are uh, this one. They have two states. Uh, radio buttons are designed this way, and we have a, a, a set of rules for that, and so on. Uh, a switch is very similar to a push button here, but it only has uh, two states. And so we'll tell you uh, when to use it, uh, avoid to use a switch control, uh, a single detail or minor setting, because in that case, it would be better to use a checkbox. So they get practical, okay? If you read that, uh, you get an idea of uh, uh, what are the conditions, the cases in which you should use a, a given uh, widget or, uh, or, a, or a different one. Um, and this is about uh, oh, this was, for example, the example for the uh, for the Mac OS. But if you go to mobile, it's the same. You have uh, other, of course, uh, type of widgets, uh, but uh, uh, you know this different type of bars. So you don't have the concept of menu, for example. Uh, but you have this navigation bar uh, that is at the top that can where you can go back or can uh, uh, go to search and so on. And in this case, they are also linking the real developer documentation. So if you want to implement that, you click here and you go to the API, the classes and the methods for this object. So it's all, it's all very well defined. If you want to develop in this ecosystem and follow the rules of the designers that invented the ecosystem, just follow these rules. And the same is for, for the others. So for example, uh, Microsoft was promoting what they call the, the fluent design, uh, this fluent design system, and they try to push it across different types of devices. So basically, they're trying to push a style, design style that works for Windows, but it can also be adapted for the web, for iOS, for Android applications, and so on. So maybe if we go into the Windows, uh, of course, the, the structure is different. Uh, by the way, they already give you some templates to start uh, your design. Uh, or uh, basically controls and patterns. Uh, how to uh, use the different types of controls here. For example, we were discussing the um, menus with the Apple. And the menus uh, from the point of view of Microsoft uh, are listed here. So in this case, they are describing the new Windows 10 interface, okay? So the, with this kind of uh, menu icons, uh, uh, the common bar with the options uh, and so on. And so there are, again, uh, this documentation by Microsoft is more uh, driven by examples and links to the real programming documentation. There is not much, uh, as much guidance uh, as we had in the Apple um in a, the apple website huh? so they, they had a different style they started with a developer documentation and then they put a sort of an of an index for helping you um to 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 choose what you do okay uh, so we are there's you uh, basically you get sooner to the apis uh, rather than the other one hmm? but there really if you are developing an application into a go, into a given context uh, uh, you should really go and read that, okay? And read the, the documentation about that. And of, of, for example, for Microsoft also tried, okay, to uh, to push the fluent design to the web applications. And uh, for example, they gave you examples. Okay, so here we have the colors that you could use, uh, the icons that uh, uh, you could use, uh, and they give you already the, 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 the libraries. Uh, uh, for, for using them in your web applications. 
and uh, and you see that this uh, is uh, in, some, in some way you know, cross-platform information uh, so again uh, we have if we want to develop uh, using that design style we have all the information in this case by microsoft uh, and of course uh, google could not be uh, left behind all the material design uh, google is calling material design the wrong style um, and you see these material design guidelines uh, which are general guidelines and then we have the components which are the actual widgets uh, that go so uh, one thing is learning to use a widget so how does it appear what are its options and so on and this is a programming task but before that uh, we have these guidelines and i uh, enter into design guidelines by google and i see the more or less you know we uh, we still have uh, these uh, uh, general concepts they call them the foundations so in general the general concepts about uh, uh, how to provide for example navigation to the users uh, so these are still uh, general principles and later on they give you the practical uh, the practical guidelines uh, about the components but about the themes and so on uh, so for example uh, now let's go to the yes components and at that point uh, you have all the components with the guidance of how to usage how to use them so in this case the the documentation is sort of uh, uh, third, um, third in a different way. The, you start from the component, and then they give you the examples of how to use that component. Instead of giving the principle and then linking to the to the to the actual widget or components. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so, start from the component. You have usage examples. You have uh, principles. So, uh, what are the basic principles uh, that uh, this component is implementing, and suggestions. Uh, when to use and how to when to use and when you shouldn't uh, use that and so on with examples do or don't and again what are its components and, and that of course will be linked to the capabilities of the of the widget where to position it uh, and and so on and this was just for for the navigation for the application bar okay there's a lot of information about that uh if you want to yeah we looked at menus for the other uh, uh they give you what the menu is uh, how to use it in which cases uh, and what variants we have depending on the on the different types of menu that you have uh, and uh, where to place it uh, and they give you also the details about how many pixel uh, every item should have uh, and so on mm -hmm. positioning so uh, here, really, there are books and books uh, of detailed information. Uh, in this case, as you see, they don't bother too much about the uh, big principles. Uh, they are telling you, OK, you want to do a menu, follow these rules. These are the components. This is the spacing that you need. You should position it in this way, in that position in the page. Uh, if it's active or not active, do this uh, other action. Use icons, don't use icons. So there's a text list, text and icons, text icon and keyboards, but there are no options for having only icons, for example. No, they are forbidden in this way. Okay, they don't give you the options, they don't explain it why. You should already know that. But this is, a, as we said, practical information. So if you are developing in, in Android, for example, this is key, but also there are uh, web libraries that try to implement the material design, web libraries that implement uh, uh, the Fluent interface and so on. So, so all of these are very rich resources uh, that are, you see, they come from a single provider, Apple, Microsoft, Google, there may be others, of course, and they give you precise rules to use their library in the in the exact way in the exact style they are designed it so it's not that they're not just providing you with a, a lot of icons use them as you want now every icon has an explanation and they will tell you when to use that how to use that where to position it and so on for example the dialogues okay and cancel they will tell you that okay should be on the right and cancel should be on the left and you should not change it if you follow the rules okay the rules, of course, they are not laws. If you break the rules, uh, nothing happens except maybe your users, your users will find the interface uh, less clear 
and uh, uh, and less intuitive. Uh, this other website, UI Patterns, uh, is uh, another set of examples. Contains another set of examples which are more web oriented. For example, is one of the many. I just put some of the links to to give you an overview. Um, but again, uh, they give you some example where uh, I don't know. We mentioned before the calendars. Uh, so uh, how to design a calendar they don't give you the code but they give you some ex examples from a real website and uh, they are commenting these examples so the solution is good and is bad for for what uh, for what reason so it's sort of a comment by other designers over different types of designs this one is uh, taken from another website and uh, uh, well, in this case, there were not uh, uh, any specific comments. And uh, so uh, it's, it's another type of resource, for example. If I, for example, I, I trying to do, I see here, pagination. So a long list of results, I want to divide it across pages. And it will tell you uh, how you can uh, obtain this, uh, uh, this result. And there are many alternatives, uh, so many examples that are taken from real web websites. And these people are just collecting them and trying to comment them. What is a solution? Why is it good? And what are the important things that you'd be able to, to, to consider in this case? Um, so right now we have these guidelines uh, we, uh, contain a lot of information information that is specific to a technology and in many cases to a specific vendor. So web versus mobile versus desktop, Apple versus Microsoft versus Google. Each one of these is proposing different types of guidelines. And the link to these guidelines, we have the libraries, okay, for programming them. We have the CSS libraries and JavaScript libraries for the web. We have the uh, operating system libraries in .NET for Windows and uh, in the um, what's the Swift for for the iOS and and Mac and so on, so they are linked to the technology. So in this case, they are uh, very practical. And then, uh, so these are technologies stemming from uh, sorry guidelines stemming from technologies. And then there are other types of guidelines. I only show this example uh, stemming from application areas. For example, we will discuss this a bit more when we do the visual layout next week. Eh? Uh, but I just wanted to give you a, a hint of a, of a different type of guidelines. So these are the guidelines, for example, for designing the federal government websites. Uh, they apply to a given domain. If you are designing a website for okay, uh, an official uh, uh, branch of the federal government of the United States, uh, you should use uh, uh, these components. Uh, you should use, uh, uh, for example, that are given here. So again, we were looking for the menu, the navigation. What was that? Uh, if you want to do navigation, you should use this kind of component, this link, uh, because uh, uh, which is. is it's not one of the exactly previous guidelines. It's a guideline that has been adapted to make all the websites in the US government look in the same way and work in the same way. And they already giving you the code, okay, the code to, to use, to link with the, with the CSS classes and so on uh, that will uh, get you that specific result. So in, in this case, the guidelines, uh, for you want to create a form, they give you some general rules, uh, and then the examples of uh, how to do a text input, how to do a text area, the title, the subtitle, and so on, and all the code that you should use uh, for, uh, for implementing that. So in this case, there are, uh, the guidelines for web designs, of course, so the technology is web and uh, it's not about the adoption of a specific toolkit, specific technology toolkit. It's not uh, the branding by Apple or by Google or by, uh, uh, by Microsoft. Instead of the, it's a sort of a style or branding in a given application. 
so you will see it uh, for the US, uh, the UK also has a, a similar style, also Italy has a similar style. We'll see some of these uh, when we discuss more about uh, visual layout, uh, because these are actually will really help also in the practical layout and the practical implementation of the website. Uh, so this is the, of course, we, we had a very quick you know, overview of all these different uh, uh, guidelines. Uh, they all tell the same star story, basically. Okay, They all implement or try to implement the same principles, but they did different design choices in implementing them. And so they came up with uh, slightly different solutions, also because their focus is more maybe on devices, uh, or uh, Google is the focus more on, on, on the web and on Android, and Microsoft the focus is more on the desktop because on, on the mobile they already lost the war uh, years ago, and uh, and they are trying to push their uh, Windows toolkit also on Android, so they want to make it stronger, stronger case there, and so on. Uh, um, there's no best. Uh, or a solution. In some cases, you are forced, for example, if you are developing for iOS, you must use this library. Uh, in many cases, if you don't, uh, the user will not uh, be able, for example, the navigation, okay, in, uh, in iOS is strongly bound to the top bar that where you should implement the back button because the back is not implemented by the system. Why in Android, the back button is already provided by the operating system. So you don't need to provide it inside your application. So there are a lot of small choices that are depending on the context in which you are developing. Once you decide the context, and maybe once you decide the style, maybe you like you like the fluent style of design. OK, you go there, you pick the colors, you pick the icons, you pick the buttons because they are nice. But you should also pick the instructions. You should also pick the, uh, the, the principles and the context, when to use a component, why and uh, in, uh, in, uh, with what rules uh, it should work, okay? Because that uh, falls on you. Don't, uh, like we did with the hamburger button, don't just take the icon. Take the icon and the behavior and the motivation for that behavior. That is what. Uh, so my suggestion is uh, if you want to follow one of these uh, toolkits uh, for, for, for design, uh, uh, spend some time in reading the rules, at least for the parts uh, of the interface that are interesting to you, and spend some time uh, looking at some examples of other applications of other websites that are built uh, using that uh, uh, the toolkit to make it uh, your own to 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 uh, know it better, so that you may uh, use the components in the way they are intended and in the way they are standard say and the way everybody is using them okay um so this finishes the the, the, the topic and with this we finish the topic of, uh, of design guidelines and uh, next week uh, we'll start again to to be more more concrete more specific and starting to do the topic of, uh, of visual design okay in these general rules uh, we will uh, have the task of taking page by page, okay, the structure of our application, the structure of our website, and for every page, decide what to put on top, what to put on the bottom, how to organize information, and so on. So practical rules to create a design of a system which is consistent with the, all the principles that we discussed today. Uh, in, 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 uh, in practically, when we have the blank page, you have to fill it with content and what are the rules uh, that we should follow, especially from the visual point of view. Hmm? So it will be more uh, on the uh, user of space uh, and the elements uh, in the, um, that should be contained into the page. Okay, I will have a look also at the uh, archived copy of, uh, that Diego shared, uh, shared on, on the chat uh, about the guidelines. Uh, and if I find uh, an updated document, I will also tell you, otherwise we can uh, look at the old content. I remember last year it was uh, totally uh, available and uh, there's something should have happened uh, in between. Okay, so thanks uh, for listening even today and for participating. Um, remember uh, remember that, uh, uh, sorry, David, what for mobile? I don't get your question. What uh, the guidelines, uh, 
this one from um, okay the all the principles and uh, are applicable to all type of interfaces the guidelines for mobiles uh, they do exist but they are different from the guidelines for uh, for uh, web applications of course and you see for example in the google uh, page they have different guidelines uh, uh for example here the microsoft for whether you are uh, working for desktop or windows or mobile they have different guidelines so they of course they apply but they don't uh, they are similar they give you a similar look and feel but the specific rules are different because the the, the technology is different okay and also uh in so apple it doesn't doesn't do web <laughs> basically but depending on the device uh, they have different rules Okay, so just remember the, dead, the deadline for today, where you have to submit your milestone document so that we may have some fun in reviewing them. And uh, the lab on Thursday that will be organized in the in the usual way. And we with you, I will meet you next week uh, as usual on the, on on Tuesday. Uh, so unless there are any questions, uh, I think we are over to for today. Okay. So thanks uh, to everybody. Bye-bye.